You know it's gonna be a good one when a period of Earth's history is named after Hades, the Greek god of hell and of the dead and of cute three-headed doggos. Here we've got molten lava oceans, asteroid bombardments, a Mars-sized planet ramming into Earth, asteroid bombardments, a boiling superocean, asteroid bombardments, maybe dinosaurs. Nope, still asteroid bombardments. So let's step into this time machine and travel 4.6 billion years into the past. I said to the past, not to October 2031 during the artificial superintelligence incident. Okay, that's better. Welcome to the Hadean, Earth's first geologic eon, which started with the planet's formation 4.6 billion years before wires for wireless earbuds were invented. Thanks to Aura for sponsoring this video. Once upon a time, the solar system was an infernal merry-go-round of moderately hot stuff. Most of the lighter materials such as hydrogen and helium were blown outward by solar radiation, resulting in the four gas giants we know. This also allowed the formation of a not-so-gassy and not-so-giant but instead metal-rich planet to form not too far from the sun, which 4.6 billion years later would be inhabited by hairless monkeys. While this clump of matter finished forming in its orbital path, it ate a multitude of rocks that were still present there, collisions that would generate a lot of heat. Combined with great amounts of quickly decaying radioactive elements, Earth became a glowing magma caramel. It also tasted like molten rock so don't even think about it. Apart from the lack of suffering, Earth certainly resembled a fiery mythological place down under where bad people go, and I don't mean Australia. Heavier elements began to sink, leaving the Earth with a massive molten iron-rich core, and thus a magnetic field that greatly reduced the profits of sunscreen vendors. Let's see if you'd survive. Nope. Volcanoes and rocks from space contributed to forming a massive CO2 atmosphere with hydrogen and water vapor with a surface temperature of 230 degrees Celsius and more than 27 times the pressure of modern Earth's atmosphere. The atmosphere back then also contained methane and ammonia, the latter of which would have introduced a noticeable acrid scent if your airways hadn't been evaporated in a microsecond. The world was young, no mountains green, no stain yet on the moon was seen. Hold on, where did the moon come from? It wasn't here a second ago. According to the most popular hypothesis, the giant impact hypothesis, the formation of the moon would be pretty hard to miss, as a Mars-sized planet named Thea had serious beef with Earth and decided to smash into it headfirst. This collision released energy enough to cook 30 septillion chickens. A good portion of the combined mantle was vaporized and formed a disk around the Earth, we had cool rings at some point. Larger ejected chunks of matter merged and became the moon. This hypothesis explains the similar composition of the Earth and the moon and the inclination of the Earth's rotational axis relative to its orbital plane. Mystery solved question mark, you wish. Recent findings complicate the giant impact hypothesis story, as zircon crystals have been found on the moon. The age of zircon crystals can be precisely determined, and it turns out the moon could be significantly older than the giant impact hypothesis allows. The thing about the all-knowing zircon crystals is that they're crazy tough and can survive for billions of years unaltered. When they formed, they trapped uranium atoms inside, which would eventually decay into lead. Because the half-life of the uranium isotopes is known, we can calculate how old they are from the ratio of lead and uranium isotopes in sampled crystals. And like war veterans, the more lead they contain, the older they are. So maybe the moon solidified way sooner than we thought. Or one even more brutal alternative is that the moon and the earth formed together due to a collision of two planets larger than Mars. But neither Thea nor any other huge astronomical body smash into earth because they are evil. Even though that often results in planet-wide extinctions, there is no ill intent. The same however cannot be said about scammers and criminals. Did you know that on average, it takes a company 277 days to report a breach? Your personal data could have been exposed months ago and you're just hearing about it now. That's why I've teamed up with Aura as the sponsor of today's video. Aura's Identity Theft Protection Service keeps track of your personal information across billions of sources, including the dark web and public databases, and alerts you to any potential threats before they escalate into serious issues. Here's what makes Aura stand out, they don't just watch your data, they help you act on it. 
Aura can remove your details from data broker sites, which means fewer annoying spam calls, less risk of targeted scams, and a whole lot more peace of mind. On top of that, they offer up to $1 million in identity theft insurance, or up to $5 million for family plans, so you're protected even if something goes wrong. Don't wait for a security breach to catch you off guard, check if your personal info has already been leaked. Head over to Aura.com slash science file to start your free two-week trial and see how much of your data is out there. That's Aura.com slash science file, take back control of your digital safety. And now, back to the video. You know how as a kid you would draw the earth and then the moon right next to it as if the proximity wouldn't be cataclysmic to any life on earth? Well that was the reality during the Hadean. In the good old days, the moon was 16 times closer to the earth than now, at 24,000 kilometers compared to the 385,000 kilometers that it is today. Now it fits all the planets in between. The earth rotated much faster too, so a day was only 5 hours long. Imagine waking up and cooking breakfast, oh whoops, too slow, time for bed. Gravitational tides resulting from the pull of the two bodies on each other deformed their surfaces, stirring them into oceans of magma. This also caused the Earth's rotation to slow and the Moon to migrate away. Mirrors left on the Moon by astronauts have allowed the observation of it still receding 3.8 cm every year due to the Moon's general disgust for humanity. Once the Earth's crust hardened and cooled down to around 100 degrees Celsius, water could exist in liquid form on the surface. But isn't water supposed to boil at 100 Celsius? Not when a very dense and heavy atmosphere is pressing down on the water to not let it boil away. A global ocean slowly began to form, mostly due to volcanic outgassing, which had been going on for a long time before the Thea collision. But don't imagine a beautiful pale blue dot with rainbows and a clear cerulean sky. The sky was likely a thick grey-brown due to all the volcanic gases and zero oxygen as the oxygen-consuming bacteria hadn't been invented yet. There were no continents or significant elevations because the mantle had a lower viscosity due to the higher temperature kept up by radioactive decay and the fact that the water in the mantle had not yet fully outgassed. At most, you could enjoy the hellscape from some tiny volcanic islands made from angry black rocks. The world was young, the mountains small, in elder days before the fall of giant rocks that boiled it all. In the late Hadean, Earth started going through puberty as impacts of asteroids up to 100 kilometers in diameter often ravaged its face with huge red pimples from space. Each one could create tsunamis 10 kilometers in height, raise the atmospheric temperature to 500 degrees Celsius, and boil off up to 100 meters of the global ocean, massively increasing real estate prices for local fish. Oh right, no fish for us yet. Probably not, but single-celled organisms could have existed. Life was indeed possible in the oceans back then, but it was vulnerable to the aforementioned extinction events. Millions of years could pass between each major impact, giving life enough time to form, but nowhere near enough time to evolve past unicellular organisms. This does not mean the conditions were at all habitable for mortals, as temperature and pressure were still far above human tolerance levels, killing a hypothetical human appearing in one of the nicer locations toward the end of the Hadean in a couple minutes, mostly because no oxygen, and hot. If they had thermal resistant suits and oxygen tanks, they could have survived for a little bit long. Nope, you just got crushed by an asteroid. The Hadean Eon lasted 600 million years, starting with the formation of the planet and ending with the formation of a stable crust after the worst of the asteroid bombardment was over 4 billion years ago. What followed was one and a half billion years of the Archean Eon, in which the confirmed earliest known life emerged as single-celled organisms. Proof of that are Archean stromatolites, which are essentially fossilized remains of bacterial mats from that period, found in places like Western Australia. For the next two billion years, the Proterozoic Eon took place, in which we got breathable air that killed most of the life at the time, thanks cyanobacteria. We got several periods in which Earth turned into a snowball, and finally, we got our first multicellular organisms, with weird squishy things like the Dickinsonia roaming around. And then we end up in the current period, the Phanerozoic Eon. Although seemingly small on this scale, during it, the most stuff happened in terms of evolution. 
Life got wild after the Cambrian explosion, with eyes and hard shells and segmented bodies and everything all at once. Then we get the Paleozoic era with plants and amphibians crawling ashore, the Mesozoic era with dinosaurs and birds, this is when the Jurassic period happened, a tiny sliver in the chronology of Earth, and finally the Cenozoic era where mammals spawned, including you. The point I'm trying to make is that humanity has existed for a time that wouldn't even be visible if shown here. Everything that humans have ever created and experienced fits in less than a pixel line inside this yellow rectangle. And within this pixel, you have gone from climbing trees to developing space travel and artificial intelligence. And then we wonder why we don't see any aliens. Any civilization is likely to evolve this fast and ascend into a form incomprehensible for your current biological brains faster than you can say Micropacocephalosaurus. The Hadean is how it all started, and if you think that it sounds like a bad time to be alive, remember that the simple organisms that could have chilled in the depths of the first oceans didn't have to pay taxes.